We're going to start with um, a G chord. And the reason we're going to do that is the G is the lowest note we have on the fiddle for tuning to a standard tuning or the mandolin. And um, it's just going to be kind of easy for us to start there. So the first thing I want us to do uh, is just play, we're going to play every note of a G major scale in first position. First position is just, you know, right where our hand is kind of where we're used to playing. Second position is, you know, if we put our second finger where our first, kind of building up. We're not gonna do any of that today. This is, we're just gonna mostly worry about first position. So, um, who could tell me how many sharps are in the key of G? One sharp, which sharp is it? F, F sharp, great. Um, now, I think it's important to remember, or to kind of be aware of some of those more letter-based theory concepts, like in the key of G, we have one sharp and it's an F sharp. I do tend to think in numbers way more and not really about the letters. We'll get into that in a second, but right now we're gonna play a G major scale all the way in first position. So we're gonna play a little past our high G. We're gonna go all the way up to our high B just to, to get all the notes of G in first position. So let's do that. I'm gonna count uh, and tap my foot and we're gonna play two beats per, per note. Like this, just listen once, it's gonna be like. Right, we're gonna do that all together. Starting on our low G, one, two, three, four. Great. So, a couple of uh, things I'm going to note on the fiddle and most of the fiddle keys that we work with, the um, the finger that sort of is moving around more than others from its sort of home position is our second finger, right? So on our A string we played a low to a C natural, right, and also a G natural on our E string. So just to, that's make a mental note of that. Um, Let's do it again, only this time I want you to not play any open strings. I want you to use your fourth finger instead of the open strings. This is, I know people kind of don't like to use their fourth finger, but the fourth finger is a very powerful tool on the fiddle and you just need to work it and get used to using it. Make yourself do it. It, it makes for so much fun stuff eventually. So do it and we're gonna do it now and it's gonna be very important when we get into the chords later. So. Again, same thing, I'm gonna count. We're gonna play two notes per beat. We're gonna play our fourth fingers and no open strings. One, two, three, four. Fourth finger. Great, yeah. You know, you can get your fiddle out. You don't have to be uh, shy, lurking there. <laughs> um, great. So, the next thing we gotta do, so that's our, our, our we're gonna work with that for our first scale. Um, I think of all those notes we just played more in terms of number than in terms of the actual letter that they're assigned. So I'm not thinking like, okay, G, D, you know, or G, A, B, C. I think of it as one, two, three, four, like the number of the note it is in the scale, mm -hmm. right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, exactly. Um, so, Keeping that in mind, uh, a chord that, uh, the way I think of the first chord, or the way it really is, and kind of what I meant by a chord has to be three notes. Some people argue this, some people say two notes is a chord, but I'm gonna go for three. Um, the, the one chord in the key of G is what? 
G, right? Because we played one, two, three, four, right? So the, the one chord in the key of G is G. And a major chord is made up of a one, a three, and a five. Now the three is kind of tricky because you can have, um, the three is what makes it sound major or minor, right? Right? So if it's a minor third, that's, and then that makes the next third a major third. If it's, so if it's a, a minor third and a major third, it's a minor chord. And if it's a major third and a minor third, it's a major chord, right? So uh, the first chord we're gonna play is gonna be a G chord. We're gonna just arpeggiate that, um, which means kind of like playing taps or something, right? right? We're gonna do that, all of the G chord notes in first position off that arpeggio. So we're playing a one, G, open G. And then we're gonna play a three, which is our B, our second finger note. Right? Then we're gonna play a five, which we're gonna use our fourth finger for, but it's a D. Let's just do that again once. One, three, five. Great, now we're gonna move to our next string. We're gonna play the open D, which is our five. We're gonna play a one, which is our G again. Yeah, let's go all the way to the beginning, and what I want to hear is this. Right? One, two, three, four. Another D. Yeah, perfect. Next string, we're playing a three which is our first finger, right? So B, go for it. Three, five, yeah. And then the next string, we're gonna play a one, which is our two, and then a three. Yeah, that's every G major note arpeggiated across the fiddle, right? So let's try that all together. We're gonna go all the way up and um, we're gonna double our fourth finger and open, so. Just so that we're really training ourselves to think of both of those notes when we need them. One, two, three, four, one, three, five, five, one, three, five, one, Three. Yeah. Is that all making sense to everyone? It's very easy, right? So now all you have to do, and, and this seems sort of simple when you say it out loud, but you have to make yourself go through and do this. We have to play every, every combination of those notes that we can think of. So the way I kind of think of this is we're gonna start with our G string and we're just gonna we're gonna move that one, but we're gonna play the next string we can, which is our D string, right? And we're gonna leave this, and we're gonna move the notes of the G string against this one, right? What's, uh, so if we're playing a G chord, what is our, what's a, a G chord tone on our D string that we could play? We could just play the D, right? It's there, we don't have to do anything. So if we're starting, Again, from our first note, G, we're just going to play that against the D. What's the next note on our G string we could play against the D? The three or B, exactly. So let's do that. Do we have any other options? D. You could play two Ds, and that's still technically in my mind, a way that I could voice a G chord on the fiddle. 
Let's do all those together again. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. We'll play each of those low notes against the D together. Let's go up and down. One, two, three, four. G. off but it still sounded good because it's just a G chord. Great so that's as far as we can get on our G string in first position so now what we want to do is move up a set of strings. Well actually no I lied <laughs> sorry I'm getting ahead of myself. We could play another note on our D string with all of those same low notes right? Which which note? G. Play it the G everybody. That one. So the three the three notes we just played on our low string, we could do those all against this G. Right? Let's, let's try that nice and slow. One, two, three, four, G. One, two, B, two, D. All right, pause. So that is hard to do, but it is a killer double stop. I use it all the time, especially if I'm playing like bluegrass. That shape, you should practice it as much as you can and just try to get it in tune because it's awesome. Want it. Let's try it again. One, two, Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want to hear is this. Listen to me do it. We're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Does that make sense? We'll do it slower than that. One, two, three, four, G and D. Again, we're the low note, we're doing this. And the high note, we're going. It sounds like this. thing I would, I'm saying about drilling your pinky, I would say that this would be a great exercise warm-up that we're doing right now. So you can do it fast and in tune. That'd be a great way to drill your pinky, especially over here on these low notes because you're able to reach, really get that muscle built up. Let's do it one more time and then we're going to move on to the next set of strings. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Are we getting it even if we can't make our hand do it? Do we understand what's happening? Yes? What's the last one that you said was really cool? You're playing a D on your G string with your pinky. And a G on your D string with your ring finger. Yeah. So you really have to be, um, like, depending on the shape of your hand, like, you might be doing this subconsciously or 
or maybe you're struggling with getting to have your notes sound clear, but when I put my finger down on the string, I'm not just simply putting it down. I'm sort of probably subconsciously deciding where on my finger I need to put the string, depending on where I want clearance of the other strings. Because my finger, especially my first finger, is basically too wide to just put it down and have like, I mean, I could do it if I really focus, but I can't have the string ring on either. How do I say this? If I have my f finger on like my e, e note on my D string, playing an open G and that E, I kind of have to bias my finger towards my A string so that it's making that noise. So I have the clearance here, or if I wanted it on the other side, say I was playing the E note on my D string and my open A, well then I'm kind of biasing it the other way. So I'm getting that noise, that noise on my G string. And what I'm doing is, I mean, your fingers are a little bit crooked on the string, but I'm kind of going closer to my fingernail if I want lower clearance. I'm going closer to the fleshy bit, the pad, if I want clearance on the A string. Now there are times when I want it on both sides and then I just have to kind of twist my hand and get it, get it to work however I can, but it's very hard to get clearance. So this double stop over here, the, that powerful one, you really have to be careful with your pinky that you're not getting those noises. Um, good pinky location can kind of come from the, lo the location of your elbow. I find it helpful if I'm, especially if I'm on my low G string and I'm doing a lot of pinky action, kind of squeeze my elbow in towards my belly button. This, that way, towards the door for me. <laughs> and as I go across the fingerboard towards the E string, my elbow's going this way, out, right? I'm not, I mean, it's not very extreme, except for if I'm doing a lot of like, I might kind of wrangle my elbow in a little more than normal if I'm really hanging out with that fourth finger a lot on my low string, but that'll help you reach. Uh, okay, let's go to the next set. So we, we already know on our D string, what our two G chord notes are, right? A, a, G, a D and G. So what's our first G chord note on our A string? B. B, yeah. So now we're gonna just hold, we're gonna kind of do the same concept, but we're gonna move it over. So now we're gonna go hold our B note, play a D and a B, and then we're gonna put our, we're gonna put our third finger down and get the G note against the B, like this, listen. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Yeah, again, you're playing a D, open D to a G. All while, all the while you're holding your B. So try it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. What is our next A string D G chord note? D. So we're gonna do the same thing. Now this one is really hard because our third finger is busy, right? So just try the best you can. I'll give you some tips in a minute. Um, so we're gonna play again on our D string, we're playing a D and a G. All the while holding our D note. So you could sit next to me if you want. <laughs> I like pointing out late people. <laughs> All right, so let's try that one. Sneaking your third finger over from yeah. the string over the So what I do is I kind of, uh, yeah, I rock. Well, what I do is I'm, so I'm going to kind of play my A string closer to the pad or the fleshy part of my finger on my ring finger. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, I'm going to rock it back almost like I'm going to collapse this knuckle slightly. I don't really want to collapse this. 
but I'm going to start to kind of flatten it out. Flatten it out. But not really. Don't actually do this because that's really slow. And if you're playing fast, you'll never be able to like get the note to sound good by the time it gets all the way down there. But just think about flattening it. And then I push my finger down kind of harder than I normally would. So the end of it's a little mushroomed out. And then I roll it over when I want to catch that. So a, you're playing a D with your third finger on your A string. And then you're going to have to play a G on your D string while playing that. So you're doing a, a three on both. It's hard. What I think is easier is let's start. Let's hold on for a second. So let's start with our G and the D together. So kind of aim right in between the space of those strings. Push your finger down really hard so it fattens out. And then we're going to roll off the G like this. Listen once. Okay, I'll see what my hand is doing. Helps to be in tune. Let's try that. One, two, two notes per note. One, two, three, four. G and D, D and D. pretty good um, again this is gonna be kind of depending on the circumstances of how you have to play this double stop I largely don't choose to play it in an instance where I'm gonna eat this um, but for right now try to roll off and on that string instead of actually picking your finger up I'm looking around and I'm seeing some people do this but I want I want that your ring finger to stay on the D note the whole time we're doing this. It sounds bad when I do it. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, now just to say really, honestly, I don't use this double stop that much um, for any length of time. Uh, unless, sometimes I do if I shift and I do it with my first finger. But I don't really ever hold this interval with my third finger. Yeah, it's I, hard to do. It's, it's hard to it's do. Hard to get it in tune. Yeah, and it just doesn't sound very good. The one thing I, I do often do, especially if I'm playing like kind of a rip and bluegrass solo is I do that kind of, I know you've all heard that sort of parallel fifth sound. You know. It sounds kind of crazy, but I do that, but it's so fast it doesn't matter if it's in tune or the tone's kind of lousy because it's fast. It's a fun trick. Um, but anyway, that's all to say is this. There, there's melody stuff where this rocking thing matters, but I'm never going to really play like a beautiful waltz double stop like with that because it just doesn't sound very good. <laughs> so, okay, again, back to the task at hand. The two middle strings we had going backwards, we had a D on our D string and a G on our D string, all the while playing the B note on our A string like this. And then we had those same two notes down there, but playing the D note. Right? So let's let's try both of those. We're gonna it's gonna sound like this. I'll do it once, then you join me. One, two, three, four, one, two. Again, like I said at the beginning, every time what we're doing is we're 
we're, we're moving through the string sequence and we're playing one note as a drone and moving the chord tones, right? So D and G while holding a B and then D and G while holding a D. One more time, three, four. Yeah, now to really get us, let's go all the way back to the beginning. So we're gonna go. when you're first trying to get this down, but it's a great exercise for getting your intonation good too. So uh, I would say try to remember that and use it as a little warm-up tool. Okay, last two, two sets of strings. What's our first G chord note on our E string? G, yes, the one. So, uh, and what are our two chord notes on our A string? B and D, so we're gonna play Right? Let's do that. Just the B. Just the D. Great. So we're going to do that against a G. Right? So the B in the G. And the D in the G. Yeah? Making sense? B in the G. D in the G. Yeah. Again, this... That's the same as this, which is very powerful. I use it all the time, even a lot in old time feeling. If I'm in the key of G, I start almost all of my phrases that have a G note in it with that double stop. I love it. What's our next uh, B, right, on our E string? So again, we're playing a B on our A string. Play it. And a D. So B, D. And our E string, we're playing a high B with our fourth finger. So. Yeah. That's hard too. That one. <laughs> okay, so. Good, good. Let's do. Both those together, listen to me do it once we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three, four. B and G, D and G, B and B, D and B. Yeah, sounding good. <laughs> All right. No, it sounds like we're torturing cats it is, here. It's rough, yeah. It'll sound better by yourself. <laughs> All right, is there any... Is any of this unclear? Do we... Even if you don't... If you can't do it, can you reconstruct it on your own, do you think? Yeah, it's not... It's not hard, really, uh, to think of. It's just hard to make it sound good. Uh, great. Well, that's the entire G chord. And now... What I would say, moving forward, we'll do one more chord because we have the time, but I wanna do, a, we're gonna kinda of jump to a different chord where we have to think about one other problem we're gonna have on the fiddle. But before that, I wanna say, I think a really good thing, if, you, if this is something you wanna really get down and um, you like thinking about it, I would say set a goal for yourself, like every day do one major chord you know, until you've done all of them. 
So, you know, get up and make a cup of coffee and do one chord where we do, where you do this process. We're not going to do every chord right now because that took us 40 minutes. <laughs> um, so you have to, you know, you have to set this up on your own. Um, but that would be a great exercise. So the, the first thing we did, just to kind of recap quickly, we played the major scale of the chord we're going to play. And I'm going to say we played, the we played every note of the major scale in first position of the chord we're going to play. Then we did an arpeggio of the chord tones, and we knew that the, what makes a major chord? A one, a three, and a five. And then we just kind of systematically combined all those mo notes, not forgetting about our fourth fingers, right? So now what we're going to do is a D chord. Um, and actually scratch that. I want to do a C chord. And uh, one thing now that we have to think about is this is our lowest C on the fiddle, unless you have a five string, but we don't, luckily. So there are some C, there are some C chord notes below this that we're going to have to worry about now. It's not just working from the root up, which is what we did with our G. We have notes below it that we're going to have to <clears throat> incorporate. So let's play. A, how many sharps or flats are in the key of C? Zero. Zero, right. So that means we're going to have um, low twos. We talked about that too. Second figure being kind of the main culprit of moving around for different keys. We're going to have low twos on our E string, our A string, and our D string now. Right? All the other fingers are kind of in their, I would say, kind of regular fiddle key positions. So F naturals now. So one other problem is we have a low one on our E string. Yeah, right, thanks. Uh, so let's play a C major scale, but we're gonna we're gonna start on our G note because we need to think about those those tones for C major even though they're below the root, right? So we're gonna play G A B C D E F G A B C D E F G A B. That's every. It's kind of a weird sounding scale when we play it out of order, but those are all the notes. The C major scale in first position. So starting on our G, two beats per note. One, two, three, four. G, A, B, C, D, fourth finger, E, low two, F, G, A, fourth finger, B, low two, C, D, fourth finger E, E, F, low one, low two G, A, three, four B. Yeah. Yeah, you I've could. I've had to. I've had to. Sounds too weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so those are all your notes of a C scale. What, if we're starting on the G, what? Note, what's the number of that note in the key of C? Five. Five, good, yeah. So we're going five, six, seven, one or eight, two, three, four, five, six. So what, what's the notes of a C chord? C, E, G. C, E, G, exactly. So those are, that's what we're going to work with here. We're going to arpeggiate the C chord. So we know that we were starting on a five. That's part of our C chord, right? G. And then what's next after the five? C, one. Then what? E, three. Let's start from the beginning again. So G, C, one. Play with your fourth finger. Then what? 
Yeah, good enough. Yeah. Okay, so now we just have to do the same thing we did before and combine those. Um, so what is our first C chord note on our D string? Because we're going to play our low two strings. E. e. So we're going to put our first finger on our E's. Yeah. And what are, go, then going back to our G string, what are our two C chord notes on our G string? G, G and G. Yeah, so we're playing this G and C. Okay, now do them against the E like this. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, great. What's our next C chord note on our D string? G. Hey, remember this move? Right? We got. So again, our our G no, our G string notes are G. Play it G and C. G C. And our high drone note is a G. This one. Play it. So let's combine all those. One. both those together. It's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. Uh, okay. That's, that's that for those two strings. What's next? D string. D and A strings. So... We know our D string notes already are which? E and G. Let's play just those. E and G. E. G. Great. What's our first A string note? C. C. Low two. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cooking so that we can start covering more ground in our last 15 minutes. What's our next A string note? E. e. So. Let's do both those together. So we're playing, just listen once. E and C, G and C, E and E, G and E. One, two, three, four. Great. That's that for those two strings. What is so on our A string? We're playing C's and E's. Let's play those. C. Fourth finger E. C. E. And what's our first and only first position note on our E string? G. Uh, no. G. G. Well, actually, I'm lying. Technically, yeah. technically the E string. So it's not the only. We have two. So we have C and E. And E and E. Yeah, and then C and G and E and C. Yeah. I think we get the idea. Right? So that's as many chords as I'm going to do. Uh, now I just want to talk about what you do with that. <laughs> but you do really, honestly, it may seem simple, even if you can think it in your head, spend the time and go through and do this on the fiddle and build every chord. It's going to help you. Uh, it, it'll just also help anything you can do to sort of orient your mind to the sound of certain intervals on the fiddle is going to help you. So um, with that, uh, a couple tricks that I like to do. First of all, when playing double stops, I don't really think about like the numbers and letters that much if I'm playing a breakdown because it's just not that practical. 
um, a lot of times I just try something and see how, see how it sounds. So if I take a tune I know, that we all know, uh, something like... I know from kind of just real quick that that's in D. Now, maybe you don't know that, but you could ask someone if you're at a jam. And if you're in D, it's likely that the guitar player is going to play some D chords. And if you do your little arpeggio exercise, you could kind of mess with any of those ideas, even for just one note. You know, and just start kind of squeezing them in wherever you can, wherever you have enough time, wherever you can think about it. If you try a double stop thinking it's a D and it turns out the guitar player is playing maybe the G chord at that section, well then, and it sounds bad, well then try a different note and see how it sounds. And if that one's bad, then try another one. That's, I mean, honestly, that's how I got through a lot of figuring out how to add double stops is just trying them. And sometimes you can play stuff that actually is pretty wildly out of the chord, but still sounds cool. So if it sounds good, do it. That, it's music, it's not math. Uh, the next concept I want to talk about real quick is that I, yeah, yeah, often if I'm playing a melody and the melody changes strings, if I can, like say I'm, I'm changing strings and I'm not using a certain finger to play the next part of it, I'll, or I'm playing an open note or whatever is happening on the first string, when I move to the next string that the melody's on, I just keep playing whatever the last note was that I played on the last string. So again, like this tune, I might go. I'll, so my last note on the D string was a D. When I went to the melody note down here, I just kept playing that D. It sounded good. It was easy. Just had to keep playing it. That's a really oversimplified version of that, but I'll, sometimes I'll do that in really hard instances. Like I might go, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so say I go, uh, doesn't really even matter. I'll just leave stuff down and play against it, even if it's a covered string. All I'm doing is moving strings and leaving the other finger down, even when it's kind of ugly. I'm not thinking about chords or numbers or anything. I'm just thinking about what my hand was doing. So that's a great trick to get some stuff in your tunes. Uh, the other thing when you're doing these arpeggios is start to think about the shapes your hand is making. And by shapes, I mean like kind of the pattern that your fingers are hitting. When we did the first sets of chords, we did the, the G notes on our A and D string. I mean, to do that rock thing, and then it happened when we were in C again, right? But over on the other strings. Those are the same shape. Even if they're different chords, the notes are all relative to each other. So if you can start breaking down, like if you do, like I said, a, a chord a day, you're going to start seeing like, oh, when I get to this spot, it's, it's the same shape as when I was doing my G chord, but now it's on this set of strings. Or, oh, this part of the chord always looks like this you're going to start making these associations. And then when you're playing a tune, you're going to see those things start to lay out. And you're going to know, oh, well, heck, that's just like an arpeggio with a note in between. So I can play those two notes over that. But you have to build the repertoire of just like the really basic chord structures to get that. The last fancy thing I want to do before we have a jam is um, talk about a fun transition note. 
and um, that's just gonna be kind of number based again. So if I'm playing like bluegrass or behind a song or anything kind of more like that, um, I'll use this one passing tone to help me get from chord to chord. Oftentimes in, in most of the music that you're gonna play fiddle with, the bass chord structure is gonna use a one chord. Say we're in the key of G, what's that? A one chord in the key of G. G. Okay, and it's gonna use a four chord. What is a four chord in the key of G? C. What is a five chord in the key of G? Like 90% of fiddle music uses a one, four, five chord progression, G, C, D. It might be in different orders, depending on what's happening in the tune, but they're good. the guitar player is gonna use those, those three chords. Maybe they're gonna use an E minor or an A major every once in a while, but like, we're not gonna worry about it because most of this stuff is gonna be G, C, D. So one fun thing you can do to get from one chord to another is to use a flat seven. So what's a seven in the key of G? Sharp. 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 So if you move that to an F, right? Uh, that an F note kind of at the end of a G chord makes you want to hear a C chord. Or, I don't know, I can just noodle some G stuff. It makes that sound wants to go to that. It's kind of like, ah, men, right? It's that resolution. Even though we're not resolving, we're actually going to the next chord, our mind wants to hear it resolve to the next chord. So you can use that all the time. So let's just look at one of the G chords we used. My favorite middle chord, we're going to play a G on our D string. Do it. Play your G. Yeah. And we're going to play a B note on our A string. Now, what number is this note? One, one. one or eight. I. Right. It's easier to do the math that we're about to do if we think of it as an eight. What's right below eight? Seven. 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 Now, we're going to do a flat seven, right? So what note? F natural. F natural. So what I want to hear is one, two, three, four. Playing a G and a B. Leaving our first finger down and putting our second finger down below our third finger, playing an F natural. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. And then what I want to hear is a C chord. Exactly. We're going to play our E on our D string. Everybody play that E. And a C on our A string. Yeah, so what I want to hear is this, just listen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. Yeah. I kind of like the the first uh, or the the first and middle finger switch strings. They're they're, they're doing this little yeah. dance. <laughs> exactly. You can add little embellishments to that. You could kind of walk to it. You could slide it, whatever. Um, same thing on the D chord. If we go, so I want to hear, um, we're going to go. Two, three, four, and then back to G. One, two, three, four. And then what we're going to do is go, uh, we're going to play a F sharp on our D string. Yeah. And a D on our A string. Great. Now what we're gonna do is leave our second finger down, but we're gonna. This is a hard move that we're about to do. But I'm gonna play a C natural note, which is the second finger note, with my first finger on my A string. This note. Everybody play that note. It would be your low two normally. But we're gonna play with our first finger. 
Yeah. So I was playing an F sharp, a D, and then the C with our first finger. Yeah. So the whole sequence is going to sound like this. We're going to go two, three, four. sense okay so we're gonna so here from the top our first notes maybe you can all just ghost along but don't make any noise yet I'm gonna play a G and a B one two then our second notes are gonna be that's a three and a one our second combo is gonna be an F and a B which is a two and a one third Action is an E and a C, which is a one and a two. And then we're gonna go back to the G and the B, the three and the one. Let's just do that much. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great, again. One, two, three, four. You got it. The next thing is we're going to go uh, back to the G. Oh, wait, we did that. Sorry. Did we? No, no. Yeah, back to the G. So uh, we just played the C for four beats. Now we're going to play the G chord for four beats, which is the G note and the B note, a three and a one. G and B. Three, one. So the whole sequence to there is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I messed up. One, two, three, four. G and B. F and B, E and C, three, four, G and B, two, three, perfect, one more time, one, two, three, four, yeah, after that, we're going to go to an F sharp on our D string, and a D on our A string. Yep. We're gonna hold that for two beats. And then we're doing this crazy first finger on a C natural maneuver, which is, it's just hard. There's no way about it. So uh, play the F sharp and the D. Then an F sharp and a C. Yeah, that's great. So you're, and each of those gets two beats. So what we have so far is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, G and B, one, two, three, four, F sharp and D, one, two, three, four, and then back home. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. hard but that those kind of little that's just to kind of show you that seventh movement and how it kind of wants you to pull but that's a great trick for waltzes songs kind of bluegrass breaks i lean on that concept very heavily